The sound of the city. 98FM's Dublin Talks. Weekdays from 10am with Adrian Kennedy. It's no surprise that there are many people in Ireland who are compulsive gamblers. Specifically, recent research has found that there are up to 40,000 people in Ireland who have a gambling addiction. Quite a high number for such a small nation. Uh, The most popular method of gambling is online gambling, with almost half of gambling losses coming from it, while the second most popular method of gambling Gambling is traditional betting. Now, gambling is easily accessible, especially uh, when Ireland has approximately 1,100 uh, bookmakers, 19 private members' clubs or casinos, 122 licensed gaming arcades, and over 10,000 gaming machines. It's a lot of gambling, actually. Well, it's been announced today that um, betting firms could be forced to shut down the accounts of compulsive gamblers by a new independent gambling regulator, or they could face uh, the prospect of significant fines under new government plans. But my question to you is, is this uh, another example of Ireland becoming a nanny state? Or is it the responsible thing to do? Justice Minister Charlie Flanagan is expected to bring the proposal to Cabinet today as part of a new crackdown on betting firms, which will also see a restriction on online and TV adverts. It's understood that the new plans will include the creation of an independent gambling regulator, which will have the right to impose significant fines on gambling firms which do not comply with the new laws. But what are your thoughts on these plans? Do you believe that this is... Uh, simply a responsible move? Should gambling addicts be protected from themselves? Or is this, as I said earlier, another example of Ireland becoming a nanny state? Do you believe it should be up to each individual if they want to gamble their house away? Call me right now on 67979891. Text or WhatsApp us 0877989898. And if you're somebody uh, who has been affected by gambling addiction... I would also love to hear from you on 67979891. Paul, you're on Dublin's 98FM. How are you, Paul? Good, not a bother me, Adrian. Paul, do we need to shut down the accounts of people who might be gambling too much? Um, I, I mean, the first question that has to be asked is how, how do you assess it? I, I think the assessment part of this one would be the hardest part, Adrian, to be honest with you. So what warrants gambling too much? Precisely. I mean, what's too much to one person when may not be too much to another person, and that's that's the difficulty in this. But the big question is 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 whether this is a, a nanny state or not. Somewhere along this line, that, that, that we we have legislators, and we ask them to do what we believe to be the right thing, and that's why we put them in all air. And if if this is people, the legislators assume that this is the right thing, and they have a responsibility to do the right thing. If people are, are gambling too much. Well, yeah, it's, it's like any other addict. They have to be protected. They have to be minded. They have to be protect. They have to be minded. Yeah, from themselves. We have we have we have addicts in in, in, in all sorts of things, and and the state goes out of its way and puts a lot of resources into protecting, mainly from themselves. So, in terms of gambling, uh, you believe that if somebody has a gambling problem, we need to protect them from themselves. Well. <laughs> A gambling problem is exactly what you said. It is a problem, and it affects the person who has it more than anyone else. It also affects their family and their friends, wives, all sorts of people. I mean, gambling, gambling I would think, is probably more dangerous than alcoholism. And I, I, I know an awful lot of people would agree with you. Um, yeah. But if somebody is an alcoholic, we don't stop them drinking. We don't physically restrain them from drinking. They can get alcohol where, anywhere. Even if they get barred from pubs, they can still get alcohol. This uh, suggestion is talking about literally shutting down uh, the accounts of people who might be gambling too much. Well, an alcoholic can only drink X amount and then, and then his own body will force him to stop. A gambler will just gamble and gamble and gamble until everything is gone. Right, and I mean, we all know it's not. I'm not speaking from my own personal experience by any means, but I, I have seen it in the past with with wives and with girlfriends and people coming home and they get paid on Thursday and they haven't got a penny on Friday. Right, and, mm. and we we all know of horror stories in this area. So yeah, I mean, the, the legislators have to to look at this and see if there is a social problem, and and this is a social problem, and the bookies the bookies have to be held responsible the same way as a publican in law is responsible. If but but what, bi- what business owner is going to turn down business? Um, you're saying they should be held responsible. If I want to spend money with a bookies, um, they're hardly going to say, ah, no, 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 I don't want to take your money. 
No, they probably won't. But that doesn't mean that that's right, though, Adrian. All right, stay there for one second, uh, Paul. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number. John, you think this is rubbish? It's uh, yes, uh, Adrian. This is terrible bullshit. Look, Adrian. People, it doesn't matter what you're talking about here. Once, it, it, if it's beer, if it's gambling, Adrian. People have to be made accountable for the consequences of their own actions, and this is basically treating people like children. You have to make people, look, if they're betting, it doesn't matter what they're doing. If we're talking about alcohol, if we're talking about, okay, I'll take it one step further, Adrian. I'll generalize it, all right? If we're talking, it doesn't matter if we're talking about uh, betting, if we're talking about class A drugs, if we're talking about alcohol, people have to be made accountable for their for the consequences of their actions. We have to, I mean, we can't have a society where we're taking the response. People, look, once you're a big boy, you know, part of being a big boy or a big girl is, you know, learning about personal responsibility Mm. and learning, you know, all of your actions, doesn't matter what they are, have consequences, and some of them, some of those consequences are pretty big. We have to, if somebody is spending too much money in a bookie's or whatever the case may be, they must be held personally accountable for their actions. Okay, I mentioned er- I mentioned earlier action. on that one of the biggest problems that we have in terms of gambling is online gambling, where yes. literally um, you can gamble twenty four hours a day yeah, just I mean, uh, just yeah, uh, Adrian, just on the phone yeah. in your hand. Yeah, but Adrian, hang on a second, right? If I put up a business in the morning, right, like an, an online, ga- like what you just said there, an online gambling mm. business, right, it, it, it's none of my, I'm putting my business online for the public, right? Now, I'm going to presume that 99.9% of the public are going to use my facility or my product responsibly, right? So I'm catering, I'm, it's a public service. I cannot and I will not take responsibility take re- I won't be responsible I cannot and I won't be responsible for somebody that can't you know that they can't be responsible in using my product you know if they're online 24 hours a day if they're willing to bet their health I mean that's not my responsibility again I defer back to the, 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 the customer, the punter, they must be made personally responsible and held accountable for the consequences of their actions. I have created okay, but, a product for but, the public. Yes, but we have a situation where this particular addiction um, isn't like any other addiction. Uh, you can be consumed, it by, be consumed by this addiction morning, noon and night, and you can access it anywhere now surely we if i'm the punt if, if i'm if i created this if i'm the creator of your example uh, your online your online gambling facility it's still not my responsibility it's the responsibility of somebody or, or everybody who uses my facility okay but well, so let me just go back to paul for one second paul it is up to individuals to police themselves we shouldn't have the state telling you no 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 you can't gamble anymore Look, go go back to what this is about, there, Adrian. Right? This isn't about responsible, ordinary people doing recreational gambling. This is a, a legislation that's been proposed for people who are addicted, compulsive gamblers. These are people, whether they like it or not, they're like alcoholics. They're sick. We have to accept the fact, and they have to accept. And when people are sick, they, they do have they to have accept. To that's my point. Of. Yeah, but, yeah but, but you can't just turn around and say that you're not being responsible because you have to be responsible. You're I don't have to be it. responsible. I created oh, a product. A for, hang on a second. I created a product for public consumption. I created a exactly. product for the general public. Just because okay. Joe Bloggs comes can we just, along, can we just, and he, can we just, that's not that. my problem. That's that not my problem. You, you created the product. I, you I, I created what? Create, let me finish now. Let me finish now. You created the product. I did. You put it on the market. So therefore, you are responsible for it. I am responsible. 
I am not responsible for... But uh, uh, well, uh, hang, on, hang on, Paul. Are you responsible for how people use your products? So, for example... You are not responsible yes, for, for example, the supermarket products. sells uh, whiskey, okay? Uh, I might like a, a, a whiskey every now and again. Um, and the next oh, person might drink it like water. Yes, that's exactly the point. Do you, do you hold the shop responsible for no, the person who's not, not drinking it properly? Absolutely not. Well, Paul... No. No. no, you see, you're, you're twisting things a bit now, Adrian. He's not right. twisting. It's the same example. He's not twisting anything. The punter or the client or the consumer must take responsibility for the consequences of his actions. Okay, stay, stay there. Let me bring in some more calls uh, about this. Stay there for one second, Paul. Uh, Shay, you're on Dublin's 98 FM. How are you, Shay? How are you? I just, my, my question has always been this, and it's a simple, fairly simple question. Who would you matter, rather be married to, Aiden? An alcoholic? Sorry, it's Aiden. An alcoholic, mm -hmm. a gambling addict, or a smoker? Now, if your partner smokes, you kick him out the back yard and get out there and smoke and not smoking in my house. Yeah. A, gam a gambling addict, you can lose everything. Your home, your kids, destroy lives. An alcoholic is the same. You can lose absolutely everything. Be prone to violence, the whole lot. And yet, every sporting occasion now, every single one of them, is either sponsored by drink companies or online gambling companies, or both. You can't even see a cigarette for sale. But the only person you're harming when you smoke is you. That's the only person you harm is you. That's the only thing you do. But a gambling addict and an alcoholic can destroy many, many, many lives. Okay, I know I, you, I agree with all of that. However, I, 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 however, if you are an alcoholic... There is no law, there has never been a proposed law that will ban you from drinking alcohol. You no. can get alcohol. Yeah, but this, that's, that's, sorry, that's this, new, this new proposal where it comes to gambling is proposing that if somebody has a gambling addiction, they can be barred from gambling. But, but it destroys people's lives. So does Every alcohol, but, do, but we would never, in a month of Sundays, suggest that an alcoholic should be, it should be illegal for that alcoholic to be sold drink. No, you're dead right. You're dead right. That's what, you, you can't buy a cigarette unless you're, you, you've got ID. And, what, and what's a cigarette doing? You're only harming yourself. But, you, but okay, unlike alcohol, you're suggesting that um, you would agree with this law that would force gambling companies uh, to close the accounts of people who appear to have a gambling problem. Absolutely. And stop them destroying, they're not only destroying their own lives, who else are they dragging down with them? Look, look, look at the whole effect. As you said a few minutes ago, you can access it absolutely anywhere. You can sit in the train, you can sit in a plane, you can do any way you want and gamble away everything you've got. And everything everybody else has. But why not, why not the same gamble? rule then uh, doesn't apply to alcoholics. You wouldn't... Well, maybe it should. If, you're not, if, you're, if, you're, if you claim you're an alcoholic, then maybe you should, you know, I don't know how, how you police it. No, I don't, I don't know how you would either. But then how do you police the gambling one as well? They can, they can walk into a betting shop and bet there if they want to. So, <laughs> yeah, but, okay, but it, uh, my understanding is the biggest problem we have in terms of addictive gambling is online. Uh, that's where the biggest problem appears to be with but people. What's stopping them putting a false name in and a false state of birth? Because most, account most accounts with most companies now have to be verified accounts in that you have to provide... Uh, you, you know, and I, I don't do much high-tech stuff, but you know and I know there's ways around everything nowadays. I mean, there is. You get your mate to do it free and you use the account. You know, I mean... Like, it, it, I, I agree with what you're saying. I just don't see how you believe it. All I right, stay, stay hard. there for a second. Steve, you're on 98FM. How are you? All right, Adrian. How's things? Good, thanks. Um, you think it's about time this sort of thing is being introduced? Absolutely, Adrian. Um, well, the difference, first of all, between alcohol and the betting is you can't lose everything overnight being an alcoholic. You can lose everything overnight on this online betting. Yeah, if you're, if you're absolutely, totally and utterly irresponsible, yes, you could. Absolutely, and it's going to take a long time to spend all your money as an alcoholic, would that be fair to say? Uh, I'm sure there are people who've given it a fair whack. Uh, well, you could spend all your money overnight on drink, Adrian. No, maybe not overnight, no, but... But no, listen, there's, a big, there's two types of betting now. There's the, if you're in a betting shop and you're spending a lot of money, there's a stigma there that you're going to get embarrassed. You're now in your bet. You're now in a room on your own betting, and there's nobody there to say one thing to you. They're so dangerous. It's so dangerous. Hmm. 
And, uh, and I, I, I I'm not denying that it's dangerous. None of us are denying that it's dangerous. Um, however, if somebody, even if they have a, a, a gambling addiction, surely that is up to them to police themselves and not the government introducing these laws. The Paddy yeah, Power has to shut down your account because you're spending too much money with them. Well, listen, I wouldn't have too much sympathy for Paddy Power. They well, whatever, no I'm just using them as an example of a company. No, but I'm saying they, they have shut down an account, Adrian, if somebody's doing well, you know that, don't you? Yeah, no, I do know that. Uh, not just them, yeah. the, uh, most of the companies will. Oh, I, know, yeah, I do well, know that, that yeah. So, a bit of tick for tat here, you know what I mean? Like, and, would you like to see a family lose everything? And Now, we're talking about chronic users here. If somebody was to lose, say, 10 grand in a couple of days, that would be the type of person I'd be approaching. I wouldn't be going there... 99% of the people, but I won't be keeping an eye on people that there was a lot of money in a short amount of time. Some people can afford it. Some people have the money. Well, then that's no problem. You take the phone call and say, listen, I've no problem with plenty of money. You know what I mean? You see, but the point... Well, that, it is hard to please, so you understand that. It is very hard And the to point that, that John is making is we as people have to take personal responsibility for our own actions and not have... Um, uh, the nanny state doing it for us. Yeah, no, I get that. But what if you're not mature enough and then your family loses everything over something small or, or over something stupid that you're going to do? I just think it, it's not a bad thing, you know? Well, uh, John... Um, bullshit. Sorry, bullshit. There bullshit, you go, yeah, Stephen. Bullshit. Well, I don't think it's bullshit. If, you're like, if your family bullshit. lost everything, it's John, bullshit. and it could have been stopped by somebody, I think you'd be appreciated. You have to take responsibility for the... You have to take responsibility for the consequences of your own actions rather than somebody stab metaphorically or literally one way or the other or maybe both standing over you like a child to just to make sure that you don't overspend or over drink or over smoke or over whatever it is. Look, people have to be made made to take responsibility for their own actions and the ramifications. Yeah, that's okay, but when somebody's losing everything, it's a different story. That's all right if you're losing a few, Bob, but if somebody's going to lose everything and it doesn't matter, matter, it doesn't it matter, matter. It doesn't matter. 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 It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They must be, te- they must be made responsible. Look, part of being an adult, you must take personal responsibility. You're not listening. You must, this is bullshit. You must take personal responsibility for the consequences of your actions. It doesn't matter if we're talking about betting, if we're talking about class A drugs, if we're talking about alcohol, you must. People are always going to do it, right? We know that. So make it legal, let them do it, and make them personally responsible for the consequences. This is about consequence. This isn't just about the action. This isn't just about the actions. This is about the consequences of those actions. And you must take personal responsibility. That's the beginning, middle, and end of it. Uh, what, what, what's that going to do for anybody that's losing everything? That but they made speech. a conscious decision to, to they they set it in motion. They chose it's, it's to the mother, the mother hang, on, hang, on, hang on a second. Look, hold, hold on, on. Yeah, hold on, on. hold on. He's not very bright. Oh, listen, personal insults when you don't listen. The if you're not listening, that's my point. Oh, no, I've not listened listening. to you, Adrian. I've listened to him. Can you just yeah, go on, uh, uh, say your piece, Stephen? Yeah, listen. Is it fair on the mother and children at home when somebody else is taking stupid responsibility? They're not taking responsibility. That's what the problem is. Yeah, what's that got to do with anything? Explain that to this me. This whole conversation is about not taking personal responsibility, and you're asking me what not no, taking personal responsibility. No, it's not about that. It's about stopping is something it, that is going to ruin a family. This That's what it's about. This is about personal responsibility and oh. the lack of personal responsibility. And having that personal responsibility taken out of your hands so somebody can stand over you like a nanny. This is bullshit. We all must be accountable for what well, we listen, do. Listen, John, some people aren't as strong as you. That's the whole point here. And is it fair on innocent people? Listen, for one minute, just... Calm yourself and listen to somebody else for a change. You're perfectly calm. Go on. I'm not perfectly calm. You keep always talking me. That's how ignorant can you be? Lonely prison wall. Go on, keep calm. Listen, you're not worth the time. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. Uh, let me read this message that's just come in from uh, Graham, and he says. 
Lads, I gamble every day of the week. I don't have a problem, but I don't spend money that I don't have uh, to spend. I live alone. I have a child to support. I don't see that I have a problem because I have to gamble uh, every day. Uh, The money that I gamble every day is not rent money, is not bill money, is not food money, and it is uh, is money that I do have left over. I don't drink. I don't smoke. What is the problem with having a gamble every day of the week, says uh, Graham. And that's... Yeah, that's fine, Graham, but you say you have to. That's, uh, yeah, uh, because I like to have, oh, sorry, I like to have a gamble every day is what he said, not that he has to. Um, I would have thought if you're gambling every single day, that could be a problem. Maybe it's not. You could be only betting a fiver every day, and then that's probably not much of a problem. Um We're asking whether or not you would support new laws being brought in that would force gambling companies to shut down online accounts of people who appear to be gambling too much, who appear to have a gambling uh, addiction. Lisa, you're on 98FM. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Adrian. Lisa, you, do you think this is a good idea? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's only a small measure that's going to be brought in. I think something bigger needs to be done. Um, It's getting out of hand with advertising and everything like do you know what i mean well i know one I of the one of the parts problem one of the parts uh, of this new um, gambling law is that there will be a crackdown on betting firms uh, which would see a restriction on online and TV adverts which yeah would... i mean you can't watch a football game now on a saturday or a sunday without like i couldn't even count the amount of ads for gambling that you see from all different firms like you know yeah, what i mean agree, yeah. one. i agree it it is quite excessive yeah ridiculous um, but Telling somebody that they can't uh, gamble anymore, that they've gambled yeah. too much. Yeah, absolutely. Shut down their account. I mean, if you're in a pub, Adrian, and you are locked, yeah. falling around the place drunk, chances are you're not going to be saved another drink, or the bouncers are going to get it and drag it out. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't happen in the bookies. You know, I know people that have walked in bookies, and, you know, they've been behind the counter, and, like, you know, they've felt like telling the puncher, please. You know, they've seen it in their face, like, do you know what I mean? Please. Don't do it, like, you know what I mean? Don't put on another bet, like, probably not in the last tenner, you know? And they can't do it. There's nothing they can do. They can't say, look, I think you've done enough now today. Blah, de blah. They don't know what they're going home to. They don't know if they if that's the last shilling they have for the week for their mm. family. You know? Okay, so you believe that uh, this is a good law, this is a good idea. Absolutely. That, uh, that we need to... Tell people you've a problem and we're not going to let yeah. you make that problem yeah. worse. Absolutely, absolutely. And John, who has that's been speaking there, he's no compassion for any any. But he, with but he is saying, and a lot of people agree with what he's saying, that we, we have to take personal responsibility. Right, well, say someone, yeah, but are you going to tell someone who's on drugs that they have to take personal responsibility? Or someone, say, say an alcoholic, right, who's four or five drinks in, you have to take personal responsibility. Don't buy that next drink. Don't, like, do you know what I mean? When they're four or five, six, seven drinks in, don't take that next drink. You know, it's an addiction. It's an addiction just as bad as an alcoholic, someone on drugs. You know what I mean? All right, stay there for a second. Uh, Patrick, you're on 98 FM. How are you, Patrick? I'm very well, Adrian, and you? Uh, Good, thank you. What did you want to say on this? Okay, um, I would just like to say I completely agree with what that lady said there, Lisa. A person who has an addiction, Adrian, will not take any kind of responsibility because they can't, they're addicted. And the other thing is you have to, I'm I'm sure you do, but um, the gambling companies are only interested in one thing, profit. And they will continue taking money, whether you're an avid gambler, you're a once-off gambler. They really don't care, Adrian, and it's about time that they were made to be answerable for their actions, to be honest with you. Okay, do we... um, Sorry, yeah, what I was about to ask is, who says what the level of gambling is that is too much? How do we define that? So, okay, somebody has a a gambling problem and they have an online account and they're spending far too much money. Um, they're, They're ruining their lives. Who's to say someone is gambling too much? Well, Adrian, I think um, the the person who's gambling themselves can't see that, okay? But it should be up to, there should be a way for a family member or whatever to 
I don't know how they're going to do it, but perhaps to be able to approach the company and say, look, my husband, my partner, whatever, is spending this amount of money. I know a guy, Adrian, who used to go into a gambling shop on a Friday evening, put all his wages behind the counter and didn't stop gambling until every single penny of that was Mm. gone. And do you, should we turn around and tell him, no, you can't do that? Absolutely. Why? It's his he's money. Got a wife. He's got responsibility. That's, that's, har- that's hardly Adrian. the. That's hardly the responsibility of the shop. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian. If he goes Adrian. in and buys five hundred Mars bars and spends all his money on that, should we tell him no? You can't have those. Adrian, there has to be somebody somewhere. It, c- it has to be able to put a stop. This okay, but well, uh, do me a favor. Stay, stay, well, stay, stay there for one second, Patrick, because I want to read out this message. It says, "Gambling is the worst addiction you can have. I have that addiction, but I hold myself responsible uh, for it. I call myself an effing idiot for doing it. I know it's my own fault and no one else's, but I just can't help it. Uh, the law should be brought in to help people before they hit rock bottom and end up uh, committing crime or hurting family or friends. And John, that message was sent in by you. How bad a problem have you got? Um, Fairly bad. Just can't help it, to be honest. It's I know um, it's my own fault, and I've always said at whole everybody responsible that has any sort of addiction that it's their fault. I always believe that, but it's it just can't help it when you have an addiction. And in I what, can't explain it. Yes, I, I really uh, can't. Ex- and I, I I can relate to addiction in terms of being a, a a smoker, and I've been on them and off them and on them and off them. So I can relate to an addiction. Um, how much? And as we said earlier on, where it comes to smoking, the only person I'm harming is myself. Uh, how much of a problem is it for you in terms of the amount of money you're spending? You'll spend everything. You'll get loans off people just to try make up to pay for bills. Or you'll either just spend that on gambling and you just dig yourself into a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. So it would be nice if there was help there for people. And how how you. far into that hole are you? Um, a few grand, I'd say, a few thousand. Hmm. But obviously, it could get worse and worse. I would love to stop, and I call myself, as I said, an effing a dope for doing it. A home self response. So, do you know? No one, uh, do you know? No one uh, forces uh, me into the bookies. That's no what I was about to say. They put money into my account. Nobody does that but me. And I, as I said, I call myself an angel for doing it. But when you have an addiction, you can't help it. So it, 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 we, you need somebody to come and help you then, do you? I don't. I need to help myself. Hmm. But I do know a lot of people how they feel and I know they would appreciate that help for someone to regularly and to say enough's enough. Okay. Do you have um, a bad enough problem that the uh, company with whom you have an online account would be able to spot that you're spending too much? You can do so many different online accounts. That's exactly like the point I was about. online accounts. That's exactly you know? the point I was about to make. That uh, if you are, you know, if if one company comes and shuts down your account because you're gambling too much, you just go and open another one. Yeah, you can open up Bet365, Betfair, Paddy Power, Boil Sports, you name it. Mm. You can just keep on going, keep on going. So... Uh, this, I mean, this is the proposal that's being introduced that uh, companies will be heavily fined if they don't stop people with severe uh, gambling problems from gambling. But it wouldn't stop you, would it? I don't think so, but I've, I've closed down my own accounts and all at times, but you still always find a way to gamble. So you've tried to help yourself, you've tried to... Um, n- nip it in the bud but then she end up back doing it again anyway you do yeah you do indeed so therefore my question is uh, again um, is there anything then the law th- uh, can do to help somebody like you what re- realistically could the law do to help you um, couldn't do anything See, what I always believe is people can only help themselves to be honest so, having, having well, companies understand. forced to shut down accounts of people who appear to have gambling problems isn't going to solve the problem, is it? 
And, and no. all, it, all it's going to do is make uh, some of those companies turn away business. I understand. And you can actually say if you have a an account at one of the sites and you tell them, you can actually email them and tell them that you have a problem and you can self-exclude yourself and they'll actually shut down the site and they'll never let you back on again. Very good. Okay. But, I didn't realise that. But uh, no, you, you haven't done that, obviously. I have done that, but there's still betting shops everywhere around Dublin and every corner you go to every pub. All right, see. so you've shut down all your online accounts, have you? I have, yeah. Right. Um, and did you find that with an online account, that's where your big problem was? Both or betting shops and online. Right. Um, so as a way of helping yourself, you shut down your online accounts, but you still walk past the bookies every 10 minutes in Dublin now. Yeah. So that's the draw that pulls you in. It's just an addiction. That's all it is. It's just a bad, a very, very, very bad addiction. And it's the worst addiction, I think, because, as I said, you could you could get 500 euro in your wages a week and be gone that day. But if you were the Minister for Justice and you were um, presenting proposals to the Cabinet today, what would your proposal be to help people like you? I've no idea. I've really no idea. Because realistically... I'm trying and I'm trying and trying to help myself. That's what I was about to say. Realistically, the only person who can help you is you. I, I, and I, that's, I believe that 100% in anything, in any addiction, the only people that can help you is yourself. Hmm. But it should be regulated more, as, as I said, as advertising. Well, no, I have to say, I, 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 I do agree with the, with the advertising thing. I do agree that the amount of advertising for gambling companies is very severe. Uh, we've restricted how much we can advertise alcohol. We've restricted, well, in fact, you can't advertise cigarettes at all anymore. Um, and they're all good things. I do think there should be a, a limit on the amount of uh of, of uh, gambling advertising. I really do. I think that is part of the problem. One last call. Uh, Tariq, you're on 98FM. How are you, Tariq? Not too bad yourself. Very good, thanks. Very quickly, what do you want to say? Well, I, I 100% would agree with that legislation law they'd like to bring in, you know. But I don't, I, I don't, think, it would, I don't think it's going to work. Because I, I, I just fail to see how it's actually going to make a difference. Like... Right, you're gonna you're gonna like ban someone from online gambling, but as the girl said and as your man said, there like you could, I could be a Paddy Power uh, member today, or you block me account and I like, go on to a different company and start betting again, you know. And the 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 bookies aren't making it easier for people that are struggling with gambling addictions because there's promotions everywhere, there's bookies everywhere, and I think another big thing is the bookies are always right next to the pubs, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Deliberately. So, like, Deliberately, like, and they're smart with that. So, like, the, the bookies aren't help. They're not willing to help people that they know have gambling addictions. I think that's a big issue. You know, I think I think the law should be put into place, but I don't think it's going to help in any way or form. Like, you know, you can block yourself, you can do this, you can do that. But there's just so many companies out there. There's so many promotions. Like, as you said, you can't watch a football match before seeing a promotion ad. Like, oh. In Real Madrid, twenty-five to one. You know, it's just, it's just everywhere. It's like, it's like, it's just viral. It's like, it's like it's no. I, I have to say, if, if if there's anything that could help, is to it would be to restrict the amount of advertising. I think it is very excessive uh, everywhere you go, everywhere you look, especially when there's uh, any sort of a horse racing festival on. It's it's unbelievable uh, the amount of of. Um, yeah, now don't get me wrong. Look, I do the gamble myself, and people like people should be responsible if they're gambling too much. But it's an addiction. People don't know when to stop. Now, for people that have drug addictions, you see ads everywhere for them. You know to help them, or if you're feeling depressed, I've never seen one ad up on the news or on the TV saying, "Oh, if you're suffering suffering with gambling addictions, mm. here's a number to call." You know, I don't, I don't think it's true. I don't think they're like. I don't know, it's just like they don't take it serious, but it, it, you do see people in the bookies, as they say, they go in on a Friday and they just spend every cent of that yeah. money. Like. And uh, like I said, restri- closing down accounts, I don't know if, if it's going to help at all. Um, John, just before we uh, we wrap up, have you ever uh, thought of going to, for example, Gamblers Anonymous? I have. I have many times. You've thought yeah. about it? I've thought about it. I've looked up on the internet where the ad and all, but I've just never got around to do it. And would you think about doing that? 
I would, but it's just time. It's work, so many bills, and you just have to keep on. But you're able to find the time for all your gambling. I know, I know. But sometimes it doesn't take long to lose. 200 quid could be gone in 15 minutes. Uh, Your gambling, is it... Obviously, it's affecting your life. Is it affecting the lives of others? It's not affecting the lives of others, but it's affecting mine badly, mentally. Depressed, depression. I'm I'm sure, and I see it even in a lot of other people you see in uh, bookmaker shops as well. You'd see them. I have. I actually, fi- I actually day, find them an extremely. Day. I actually find them an extremely depressing place, to be honest. It can be definitely, yeah. And it's 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 sad. It's sad. It really is sad. And it's my fault. Nobody else's. It's not that the bookies' fault. They're mm. going in and spending my money. It's my fault. But people do need help. They do need help. And if there is that little bit of extra help that can help them from hitting rock bottom and. John, uh, John, before it gets too severe, before it really takes over your life and you're in, in chronic debt or whatever, would you not do that one thing and give them a call even? I suppose I will have to. Hmm. I just haven't got the courage to do it, I suppose, really. But it's the only way to help myself, really. It is. You know? And uh, for anybody who's been affected by this conversation, the number for Gamblers Anonymous here in Dublin is oh one eight seven two. Double one, double three. Oh one eight seven two double one double three. Uh, John, maybe even give them a call. Even if you hang up the phone, give it a try. I will. Indeed. All right. The best of luck Thanks to you. Thanks for, for talking to me. Minute. No problem at all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Oh one eight seven two double one double three is the phone number for Gamblers Anonymous here uh, in Dublin. This is ninety eight FM's Dublin Talks. 98 FM The sound of the city 98 FM's Dublin Talks Weekdays from 10am With Adrian